take a look at contingency tables, conditional probability, the multiplication rule, and what independence means in statistics. First thing, for contingency tables, what we need to have is bivariant data. And this is data that uses two variables from a population. So if I have a group of people and I ask them about the type of vehicle they drive, and they say cars, trucks, and motorcycles, then I also ask them about the kind of pets they own. And we have cat, dog, and a fish. This would be considered bivariant data because I took the same group of people and I asked them about two different things. Now let's say that there were five people that had cats and cars, and I'm just going to fill in some random numbers over here. Okay, the numbers on the inside here represent how many people were in each category. So this three, for instance, represents that were three people that answered they drive a truck and have a cat. So this is our um, joint probability here of being a truck driver and having a cat. Now in the bottom here, we're going to have some slightly different values. This box right here, since it doesn't have a category above it, it is actually representing all the people who said they have a cat. So in order to find the number that goes here, we have to add the number of people that said they drive a car and have a cat, drive a truck and have a cat, and have a motorcycle and have a cat, because all of these people represent those who have cats. So there would be a 12 in this box. Now the box right here underneath of it represents all the people who have dogs, so that would be eight. This one right here represents all the people who have a fish. This one would also be a 12. Now the box in the corner right here, similar type of thing. It doesn't have a category above it. It doesn't have a category to the side of it. What this corner box represents is our size of our sample. So it represents all the people we asked. Well, in order to get that, I can add these last three values that I just had. 32. Because there were 12 people, 8 people, and 12 people that I asked. So when I add all those together, I get 32. The bottoms along the box are similar. This first one is going to represent all the people who had cars. The next one is going to represent all the people who had trucks. And the last one is going to represent all the people who had motorcycles. So if I fill in those, I'm going to have 19, 5, and 8. Now these three together should also equal 32. And if you add those together, you're going to have 27. 27 plus 5 is indeed 32. So this right here is what's called a contingency table. It takes bivariant data and it displays it in a table. Now what we can do is we can change all of these into probabilities. And when we do that, we actually change our contingency table into a joint and marginal probability table. I've taken my contingency table and I've turned it into a joint, pro joint and marginal probability table. And now when it talks about the joint probabilities, it's talking about the cells on the inside of our table because those are the probabilities of the joint actions happening. This point zero six three here is the probability of the joining of a truck and a dog. So it's the probability of randomly selecting somebody that has a truck while at the same time having a dog. So if we gave um, the truck column a title of T and the dog column a title of D just for simplicity, this cell right here would be the probability of T and D. So all of these on the inside are joint probabilities. The cells on the outside, these are called our marginal probabilities, and they are individual probabilities. So this 0.594 right here would be what's the probability of selecting somebody with a car, because this is only the car column. This 0.157 would be what's the probability of selecting somebody with a truck, and so on and so on. Now a way to check this is to make sure that your probabilities add up to be 1. Now they might be slightly off, but that would be due to rounding errors. So 
if you get 0 0.999, that's fine because that would have been because of rounded values. Or if you get 0 0.1001 or something like that, that's also fine. And again, like this 0 0.375 would be the sum of all these three added together. The 0.25 would be the sum of these three added together. Now they might again be off slightly, and that would be because of rounding errors. So this is a joint and marginal probability table. When we left it as just numbers, it's called a contingency table.